it's finally that time. What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we're going to be continuing the series where we talk about the characters maxed out, ready to go, and what you guys can expect before you guys decide to deep dive in with your wallets. You guys can have all the information readily available for you so you guys can do what you need to do. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Xiao's strengths, weaknesses, his builds. We'll talk about weapon options talent order level meaning what talent should you level first and we'll go over each of his individual constellations we won't be focusing on basic things like materials needed and stuff like that because by now you guys already know what you need and if you guys are looking for video reference you guys can check out one of my other videos where i talked about my initial thoughts on Xiao. so without further ado guys let's go ahead and dive on in so let's get into Xiao's strengths first Xiao's strengths is that he can deal ridiculous, just absolutely absurd amounts of damage in a very short burst of time. His primary role is that he is going to be a DPS day in, day out, no matter what. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, he does bring a couple of weaknesses with him just due to the fact that he doesn't really offer anything to your team except for, well, damage. His trade-off is that since when you utilize his ultimate, he's consistently losing HP, you're going to need to make sure that you put some type of sustain on this character until they decide to enhance or implement weapons that allow you to do life drain. For now though, he's going to require some sustain because if you leave him in combat a little too long, especially without a healer, he will die. The other part of him being selfish is his character really matches his lore, meaning that he doesn't really offer anything in terms of team utility that's going to allow you to do other things. Sure, he can swirl, but you're not likely to build him on a high elemental mastery build due to the fact that you don't want to sacrifice too much damage. Other than that, though, Xiao is pretty straightforward. So now let's get into builds. Uh, when we get into builds with Xiao, before we even talk about gear sets at all, I want to talk to you guys about stat priority. Um, and the reason why I talk about stat priority first is because I want you guys to have the information so that no matter what set you, you guys decide to use, um, you guys still understand that when you have these stats, this is what's going to improve Xiao's capacity. All right, so the big thing you guys are looking for is attack percent, crit rate, crit damage. Energy recharge is huge for Xiao, and of course, elemental mastery at the end. Now, obviously, a Nemo bonus damage, it goes without saying, but since you can only really get that in one place for right now, <laughs> you guys will only be thinking about that in terms of your cup, at least until weapons come out that also give a Nemo bonus damage. But let's go ahead and get into his artifact slots. So in terms of general positioning, um, for your cup, you're pretty much going to be looking for an emo bonus damage. The reason why I say this is because an emo bonus damage is just where it's at. Um, I tried both physical damage and an emo bonus damage. And sure, with physical damage bonus, you can get a lot more damage on your like basic attacks and stuff. You just aren't going to see the big numbers that you want to see. Because when you ult and his ultimate just becomes all an emo, and then you're just utilizing his E, um, that's pretty much where he's going to shine get the most damage. If you're unable to get an Anemo bonus damage cup, attack percent in this position works just fine. Um, so don't stress yourself out if you don't have that perfect piece of gear. Just rock with the attack percent until you're able to get the Anemo bonus damage piece that you're looking for. In terms of his helmet, you guys are definitely rocking with the crit damage piece. Uh, the reason why I say this is because normally on most characters, I'm like, yeah, you know, you could rock with like crit rate or something until you get the crit damage. But because with Xiao, he has an innate uh, ability, basically his crit rate as you ascend him or increase the star level, basically, is going to increase his crit. So as his crit increases, it makes it a lot easier for you to build him, especially if you're a newer player uh, who are just trying to look to get to gear. It's going to allow you to ease into crit damage a lot sooner than you normally would. Because on other characters that don't have the extra crit rate, you'd have to, you know, go with attack percent first or move into crit rate to get the extra crit. But with the extra crit rate that Xiao is already giving you, you can transition to crit damage like that, and it's going to increase his ability to deal damage sooner so i think it's pretty much a no-brainer here that we're gonna go with crit damage here in this slot period again if there's a situation where you don't have a crit damage piece i think 
attack percent, of course, can still work just fine. Now, in terms of a timepiece here, it's kind of a no-brainer. You're just going to be rocking the attack percent <laughs> most of the time. And most of the time, meaning 100% of the time. <laughs> All right, because there's nothing really else that's going to go in this slot. So now let's talk builds. Uh, the thing with the builds here is there's a ton of different ways that you can build them. And I think the easiest way is if you guys kind of follow the format of the test version, uh, where if you trialed them out, they showed you that he had two-piece Gladiator, and he also had uh, two-piece Viridescent. Um, it, honestly, guys, like that's one of the easiest ways to build him, uh, just because you get the extra attack percent from the Gladiator, and then you also get the Anima bonus damage from the uh, Viridescent set. Now, currently I'm rocking with the four-piece Viridescent on Shao, but it's kind of eh, neither here nor there because I don't necessarily focus on elemental combos. Uh, so that's kind of a niche thing. So I would say if you guys are going to go with the Viridescent, it's probably going to be the two-piece bonus. Now, you can go with a four-piece Gladiator. But the four-piece gladiator is only going to affect your normal attack damage, so it's kind of, you know, off-brand on the four-piece two there. And there are some unorthodox builds that you also could use, but may or may not be as effective. Now, for those of you guys out there who are still rocking with the four-star artifacts, let's say you guys are watching this video, you guys just start playing Genshin Impact. To be honest, you guys can get by with, like, a Berserker set, honestly. Uh, if you guys are just going through the game following, like, the tried-and-true method to get through the world levels, I think Berserker as a four-star set is perfect, all right? Uh, or if you guys are looking for more energy recharge, you guys can rock with the Exiles. But Berserker Exiles is probably just where it's at until you guys are able to climb into the two-piece Viridescent with the two-piece Gladiator. So now let's get into his weapons. And honestly, guys, you got a lot of options here. Um, there's not really much that's not going to work with Xiao. Um, if you guys are looking for more energy recharge in terms of four stars, then Favonius Lance can work. Um, especially if you guys are just trying to keep his ult up and you're positioning him with a character that can keep him alive. A.K.A. Barbara, A.K.A. Chi Chi, A.K.A. Jean, A.K.A. Bennett. Uh, pretty much anybody that has the abilities that's going to allow him to stay up or stay in his ult form as, as long as possible without sacrificing his life. Um, any of the four star spears in terms of damage can do fine. Black Cliff, Royal, BP Spear... Dragon Spine Spear, if it's the only thing that you have. Any of the four-star spears can work. Um, if you were to ask me what spear would you use if you were free to play D and you didn't have access, I'd probably just throw them on the Crescent Pike and call it a day. Now, in terms of five-star spears, things actually get a little bit interesting. When I looked at Skyward Spine, we tested this. This actually ended up being my favorite weapons on him, and I'll talk to you guys about why. It's just because Xiao has a very interesting situation, um, especially if you guys aren't going with his constellations, is sometimes he might have an energy recharge problem um, if you're trying to use him on the field most of the time, right? Um, it's really about timing his E and really paying attention to his E and using it at the most opportune time so you can have the most energy available, especially if you're not building him a super high energy recharge build. So I found that Skyward Spine kind of offset that a little bit. Um, it gave me a little bit of extra crit. It sped up my attack speed, gave me a little bit of damage on the vacuum blade. And of course, with the 36.8% energy recharge, made it a lot easier to consistently generate my ult. To the point where, once I got into his constellations, which we'll talk about here in a bit, uh, with his constellation 1, I was pretty much able to keep his ult up at all times. However, when I got into Vortex Vanquisher, in terms of raw damage, Vortex Vanquisher is actually pretty goddamn beastie on Xiao, especially for you guys that are going to be pairing Xiao with shield heroes. Like now, Fumi, Zhongli, Diona, Xinyan, so on and so forth. But in terms of raw damage output, like this Vortex Vanquisher was a lot of fun to play with. The challenge, though, with this spear is that you basically need to make sure that you have a shield up at all times, or you're going to be losing out on a lot of damage on Xiao. But is still a viable candidate if you happen to have this weapon. And then, of course, Primordial Jade Wing Spear is great. Um, it works as intended. Uh, you put up, you know, decent amounts of numbers with this ability. So there's nothing really to worry about here. So if you have any one of these three spears, I mean, you're pretty much in good hands, like all state. Now, in terms of a best spear, five-star version on him, 
I can't say that there is one yet. Um, as you guys know, we got Hu Tao Spear coming, and there's supposed to be a new batch of weapons coming soon. So if you guys are asking me, hey D, should I get to R5 on this particular weapon at this point in time, I would have to say I would lean on the side of caution. Uh, just due to the fact that Jade Spear is just so old, even though it's a good weapon, it's just a really old weapon. And that as they come out with new sets and batches of spears, um, this could easily be replaced here in the future. So if you guys have R1 of any of these weapons, I think you're pretty good, <laughs> okay? And I just throw that out there. You might lose a little bit of damage, obviously not having the refinement, uh, but at February 5th, 2021, um, again, this is the time to be cautious. <laughs> so if you guys are watching this video in 2025, then of course we'll have a lot more spears that you can choose from, but as of right now, with these three five-star spears, it's kinda, eh. Anyone you got can work fine. Now, when we get into his talent level up order, um, the most important talents, honestly, with Shao are going to be his S1 and his S3. Okay, the reason I say that is because his S1 is skill 1 is basically influencing how much plunge damage he's dealing, how much attack damage you're getting, period, right? And then your ultimate is amplifying exactly those things. All right, so if you're looking for the safe way, then I would say three and one at the same time. And then obviously his E, because his E is also really, really important. Um, but the reality is, is you're going to need all three of these. Okay, so <laughs> to be frank, I would just go ahead and just get all of these to level six as soon as you could. And then if you guys are thinking about using boss materials, because this is like your favorite character in the game, then I'd probably improve the S1 and the S3 first, and then the E. Although on the E, you can get a ton of damage as well. Now, when we get into Shao's constellations, unfortunately, I think that he needs some help here. Um, I have to say the Shao has the weirdest constellations in this game. Uh, a lot of which don't really make sense, uh, just because the way that he's set up. So I will say right out of the gate at Constellation 1, I think that's pretty much all that you need unless you're just going for collection sake or you like the fact that he's going to be generating additional moves uh, with his C6 when you're in when you're doing large batches of enemies basically in like an abyss situation or something like that and the reason i say that is because when we get into his constellation one this is the only one of his constellations other than the skill ups that is going to allow you to basically have this ability on forever uh, this first constellation is going to increase his charges by one, which is going to significantly add to your ability to deal damage and your ability to generate energy so you can keep your ult up more consistently. Now, the weird thing is this, all right? <laughs> this is where his constellations just get ridiculous. In a bad way, though, <laughs> not in a good way. Uh, when in the party and not on the field, Shao's energy recharge is increased by 25%, okay? Which is cool and all, if all you're using Shao for is to come in there, be an ult bot, use his ult, deal damage, and get the hell out of there. However, once you get his constellation one, with the three charges, is going to allow him to get energy a lot faster. And if you're running in a situation where you have enough energy recharge, or you're running with a weapon that has energy recharge on it, you'll have more than enough energy if you're timing his abilities correctly. So that's why I find it really weird to me that he would have energy recharge increase when he's off the field. Because most of the people that I know that you shall like to have Shao on the field most of the time. And only really take him out when it's time to activate the heal that he needs to keep his ass alive. Now we're going to skip over C3 because of course C3 is literally just a skill up. Constellation 4, another super weird one, because when his HP falls below 50%, he gains a 100% defense bonus. Also, super duper weird Constellation, because if you're running Shao, chances are you're running a healer, and you're not looking to get him below 50%. So, the problem is, is cool, once he gets below 50%, he gets a 100% defense bonus, which is great, but at that point, or by that point, you're probably switching him out anyway to heal him. So another really wasted constellation. Now, if he had some type of way that, you know, 
I don't know, once he got below 50%, he started regenerating his life or something, and you wanted to keep him on the field, or this was a way to extend the amount of time he can stay on the field, then I think this constellation would be great. But it's just weird, because it's kind of pointless. Now, once we get into his constellation 5, again, great, because it increases his overall power level, which is always, always good. And then a C6 naturally is going to just, oh my god, like it's going to be crazy, especially if you have the C1, because this is going to allow you to just dash and dash and dash and dash and dash, especially if there's multiple enemies. However, if you're fighting one enemy, this constellation might as well not even exist. So this is why I thought that in terms of constellations, Xiao's constellations really need help. So if Mihoyo decides to buff these constellations, which to be honest, I think that they could use it. I think this would really amplify his kit, especially since this character is the type of character who is selfish, that does do his own thing. I think he needs a little bit more of his own thing in these constellations. And a lot of these constellations, I think, don't have anything to do with how this particular character is played. So... That's why I say that, honestly, guys, for Constellation 1, I think that's pretty much all that you need. Um, unless, of course, again, you're trying to maximize DPS, or for collection's sake, you can go with the Constellation 6. But, due to the fact that all of his Constellations, except for his C1 and the skill-ups, are so situational, it's hard to say, or even recommend, that you guys go even further than that first Constellation. All in all, I think that Xiao is a great hero. If you guys are looking for a hero that can deal damage, if you don't have a primary damage dealer, or you just think that Xiao is the coolest thing since sliced Hawaiian bread, then I think that Xiao is the hero for you. Um, the big thing with Xiao is, again, he's really, 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 really selfish, so he's not really going to bring any forward team utilities. So the drawback, again, with Xiao is that he'll easily be replaced by somebody else when that new Dazzling Damage Dealer comes out, and I think that's the only challenge with Xiao. So if you're looking at Xiao, Xiao is a great option for pure damage dealing and to look at somebody that's super awesome and make the game feel like dynasty warrior when you're tapping heads and clapping faces all right and that is Shao's primary role and although i think his constellations definitely need a lot of help i still think the Shao is a lot of fun so with that being said guys that's all i wanted to cover today if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to assist. And if you guys could do me a solid, and for those of you Super Shao fans out there, post your build in the comment box to help other people who are watching this video have a better idea of how they want to build their Shao. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>